I made it to California, and we're here at Digital Pix Imaging with colorist Eric McLean. He's going to guide us through some of the stuff we need to do to get this footage looking really good. The most challenging part of color grading is matching different shots, but it's not as difficult to make one particular standalone shot look great. We've got the red, we've got the black magic, we've got the FS7, we've got the F5 and the FS5, and also the Canon C300. In episode one, Derek Allen, Chris Downing, and myself took six of the most popular cinema cameras and put them through a stress test. For this project, I decided to use the DaVinci Resolve Color Management Color Science. It provides a much more accurate representation of the light values that were captured on scene. With the red camera, when you first pull up the footage in Resolve, it, it came up looking correct, meaning the skin tones and the neutral colors, the grayscale and such, came up accurate. I didn't have to do a lot of manipulation to make it look correct. What I did for the red that was exposed one stop over, I applied the same grade as I did on the base um, exposure. And then I just went into the raw settings and dialed down the exposure minus one stop. And it, and it tracked, so. Yeah, what two cameras are these? The red versus red. Red. Oh, red versus, okay. Yeah, because they look exactly the same, like, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Which wow. is good. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. so I was able to recover the one stop over and still have it match the base without any degradation. Came up a little warmer than the other cameras, so I did have to kind of shift away from, from yellow uh, amber to uh, get it uh, neutral. The overexposure, it handled it very well. Since I have access to the raw data, I can just go in and if it's one stop over, I can adjust the exposure parameter in, in the raw controls and just minus one, one stop. And it would fall right in. And the color balance tracked and, and, and I would have to just make an adjustment to the contrast, the highlights a little bit in the midtones, but it wasn't a, a lot of manipulation to get it to match the, the base exposure. The underexposure, it was similar. I just needed to add one stop to the exposure in the raw parameters. But I did notice that there is more noise in the image with an underexposure with the red. Red does have noise um, in their images, but it's not a uh, noise that's not displeasing. It kind of adds a little texture to it. But as you underexpose, that noise starts to get a little more unpleasing to the eye, which, you know, is one of the artifacts of, of red. The red can handle two stops, three stops was usable, four stops starts to present a lot of artifacts. And not that it was unusable, but it, it made it very difficult to match the, the base exposure. If you're shooting red, once you get to three, four stops, you're really uh, compromising your image a great deal. Huge gaps, you're missing a lot of, of pixel information. The rule of thumb truly is overexposure is way better than underexposure. Wait, and, um, and that's what I want to see about cases. <laughs> I want to see with the black magic though. It may surprise us. With the black magic, base exposure was fine, but I did notice that I had to do a little more manipulation of the color balance controls to get it to look correct, meaning once again to have all the neutral tones um, correct. I noticed specifically with the black magic that the shadows uh, were fairly unbalanced, leaning towards the cyan with a, with a lot of elevated blues and, and greens. So it, it would be your estimate that with the red as you stop up, and you apply the same color variables right. and just stop down in right. color grading, the colors don't shift with the red. No. But in the other cameras, as you apply the same variables, you're finding a color shift. With the Black Magic, there was a slight increase in uh, saturation and it warmed it up just a, just a hair. So I did have to do a uh, grade adjustment and just dial the red back in the blacks, actually. And now it, it matches pretty identical to the base black magic. So I had to 
balance the, the, the shadow areas out. And when doing that, it also compromised the midtones a little bit. So you're doing much more um, massaging of the image to get it to look correct. When you first come up the image and it's like maybe two stops over, it looks like you lost detail in the highlights, but I was able to dial that back and it would bring it back into usable image. With a slight color shift, so uh, with the black magic, once you brought the exposure down to an acceptable within range, you had to rebalance your colors to get it to match your base exposure. In the image, there there's a uh, blue background, uh, a, a translucent background that has a, a blue light on it. When comparing that, once the scene was balanced and the chip chart was, you know, balanced and neutralized, the blue representation of that background in the black magic didn't match the blue in the red and some of the other cameras which we'll talk about the blue was uh, a little more towards cyan now that's something that you can correct with a secondary correction and resolve so you can take care of that without a problem but that's just an extra step that i didn't have to take with the red and some of the other cameras as far as going under uh, the black magic handled underexposure better than the red with less noise. Yeah, the black magic held, holds up pretty decent underexposed. That is excellent yeah. news. Yeah, the black magic holds up best so far out of three underexposed by two stops. The red is struggling a little bit. But once again, you have to slightly rebalance your, your lift gamma and gain to get it to match your base exposure. Look at that! See how yeah, there's no yeah, mountain. Yeah, right. But this level, but yeah, yeah, you got some, you got some information. There's a lot smoother. Um, there's some pixel information there. At four stops, that's a usable image. You clean that up, that's usable. Has any other cameras even given you that smooth? Even though it's lost the red, this is where we get that fixed noise pattern. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and that's why we get it, because it's actually doing something that the other cameras couldn't do, and that's what I couldn't appreciate. When everybody's faulting it, they're not giving it a fair comparison that when you look at the other cameras at the same variable, the fact that it even allows for you to go two and four stops before you get to that level of fixed noise pattern and have such recoverable images is, is quite amazing when you compare it to the other cameras. The resolution was really good with the 4.6K sensor. You have a lot of detail in your in your image and that was impressive. That stood out to me actually. The tweed on her jacket, mm -hmm. you can see the patterns better. Mm -hmm. Like even like the hairs on there, because oh, this is the black magic. And even Claudia, you can see her pores yeah. more so. I like the Sony F5. Um, it was not uh, a raw file coming from the Sony. It was uh, a log file, Sony S-Log 3. It looked good, a lot of latitude. The uh, resolution was good, not as good as the black magic or the red, but still very nice. At base mem, which is an old term we used to uh, use in, in color grading, at base mem, just calling it up, it was also very close to neutral. Um, I did find that once you put in the input transform that the blacks and shadows were not necessarily crushed but very, very low level, very low detail in the shadows. I could recover that, but uh, once again with the red and the black magic at base mem, we had all the detail in the shadows. I didn't have to lift, lift the, the, the gamma and the shadows to get detail in the shadow areas. With the F5, there's a, a bit of noise uh, in the signal um, or in the image. As you uh, overexpose, that noise was lessened. So especially once you got two stops over and above, the Sony seemed to prefer uh, overexposing the image by a stop, stop and a half, two stops. It gave less noise and you were easily able to dial it back down and, and get more detail in the shadows with less noise. So it seemed as though the Sony preferred to be overexposed by a stop or two. It, it handled the, the overexposure very well. 
the underexposure, not so much. Uh, it didn't handle that as well as the overexposure, which is true with most cameras. With the Sony, you saw more noise in the underexposure, more so than the Black Magic. And um, it was, I think, better than the red in underexposure, uh, noise-wise, but uh, it was still, still noise inherent. The FS5 seemed pretty lacking in almost uh, every, every category compared to the other cameras. I was able to get a good image out of it, you know, as I was with all the cameras, you were able to get a, a good image out of it, but it took a lot more work to get it there. Some of these overexposures might help, help. Okay. with some of this noise, and then you bring it back to a normal resolution. I, I hope so, because I don't, I, don't, I don't know. It was shot log as well, S log three, but when I applied the input transform to it to get the gamma back into Rec. 709 gamma in color space, it, um, it didn't look correct. It looked overexposed, oversaturated, and there were a lot of banding artifacts in the image. So I decided not to use the input transform and just do a, a manual uh, grade to get the contrast correct and the saturation, and that helped. FS5 uh, appears to improve greatly on the noise uh, factor when you overexpose it. Uh, in this case, three stops, it looks, the image is much cleaner indeed. So, uh, and you're able to still get that color saturation? I'm able to get the colors looking pretty, pretty close. Yeah, I think I'm about dialed in right there. Once I did that, it looked, looked good, but that's just more work. You know, it took more work to get it there. I don't work with Sony a lot, but mostly Red and, and Airy. I'm Black Magic, at least for narrative cinematic storytelling. I think Sony might be more towards the upper range of, of luminance, more so than, than the shadow areas. And Sony is known for their really sharp looking images, which make them look kind of like video, which is why people don't really like it. it you know, it looks like clean, clean video, but you know, that's, uh, you know, the sensibilities there. Um, so the Canon C300, I got an image that had uh, the gamma baked in and the gamut baked in as well. And it looked pretty good. Uh, originally we wanted a Mach 2, which would gave us the 4K image, but it wasn't available at the time, so we had to go with the Mach 1. There was a slight uh, shift towards green. It does lean a little green. A little green, really? Oh, yeah, just the hair, which I was easy to neutralize. It was just uh, um, a gamma and gain adjustment, and it looked, looked really good, it looked really good. The color shifts with the red being more amber was definitely noticeable. The color shift of blue on the Black Magic, definitely noticeable. The color shift of green on the Canon, not as... It's, no, 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 it's not as pronounced. Canon still had a lot of detail because we up res to Ultra HD for, for all the footage for output. Underexposed the Canon. Yeah, the underexposed looked look good. The overexposed looked good. Even though it was a, what we call a baked file, it, it retained highlights pretty good. Well, it retained highlights to the extent that it can go because the Canon capped out, I believe, at two and a half stops over. And I believe also two to three stops under. If I received logged footage from the Canon, logged files from the Canon, I think it would have probably uh, excelled even better because then you have more, more uh, manipulation. You have more range in which to, to manipulate the signal. The FS7 was very similar to the F5, much better than the FS5. Um, it was almost identical to the F5 there were uh, some shortcomings, especially once you underexpose it, it, it revealed more noise. Color fidelity wasn't quite as good as the F5, but it was very close. I mean, we had to really zoom in. The change in, in hues were not quite as smooth as the F5, but it was a very close, close second. You know, the F5 was uh, the best, followed by the close second was the FS7. And the FS5 was a distant third as far as the Sony cameras. And all the cameras overall, I would rank it last. Tweaking and calibrating is always not quite right. That's your specialty. If you're 
ranking the cameras. It's, it's, it's not necessarily which camera is best, it's which camera is best for the, the job or the project. Or for you. Or for you. Uh, the, from a colorist standpoint, my preference would be to work with red footage uh, out, of, out of these systems. My preferred out of all the cameras is the, is the Ari Alexa but out of, the, out of the test of these six cameras. The second for me, which was the surprise of this test, was the Canon C300. I really liked the ease of getting it balanced and how it looked um, from the skin tones, the natural skin tones, and the, the dynamic range, the way it handles highlights. Third, I would say, would be the Ursa, the Blackmagic Ursa. I, what I liked most about the Ursa was the uh, resolution. The image was very sharp, very detailed. Um, it's raw as well. Uh, you can record raw internally. The dynamic range was great. It handled the, the underexposures really well, very low noise. When there's an exposure mistake, it's usually not an overexposure. It's mostly underexposure. So in that sense, the Blackmagic camera did really well with underexposed images, followed by the Blackmagic would be the Sony F5. I thought looked looked really good. People are opting to use the Red or the Airy for narrative storytelling, but the F5 was also easy to work with. After that would be the FS7, which is very comparable to the F5. Um, it's almost the look uh, and the ease of, of balancing the image was comparable to the F5. They're almost identical. Finally would be the FS5, which I found to be somewhat problematic with having to um, get the image in a good, good place to work with. Just, just had to put in more work to make it look good. All right, this wraps our color grading session and I'm heading back to DC so all of us can take a look at this footage. Make sure you tune in for episode three, which is gonna be the panel discussion. Check out the entire BTS of this on Bart Johnson Productions YouTube channel.